voters cast their ballots Sunday in one of the country's largest midterm elections in history, with about 21,000 local and national seats up for grabs. Final results are expected next week in what could be a referendum on President López Obrador's government. The story right now in Mexico is devastating. Uh, nearly 100 politicians, what, at least 35 candidates who ran in this election were murdered in the lead-up? Yes, Amy, the situation is very complex, and it really represents what has been happening in Mexico for many years. It's not only the political violence, it's the violence that is affecting the majority of the states in Mexico, is the violence perpetuated by the organized crime, but also is the violence perpetuated by security forces that are committing uh, human rights violations all, of, all over the country. This political process, this uh, electoral process, has been one of the most violent. I mean, you just mentioned the numbers. It has been the most violent for women, because out of the 35 candidates who have been killed over the, the, the electoral campaign, 21 uh, were women. Uh, we have uh, seen uh, hundreds of reports of uh, different types of attacks and violence against candidates and against politicians during the 200 days of electoral campaign. And unfortunately, we are seeing also uh, President López Obrador that is denying the reality. I mean, every time that he's been asked about this political violence, he just mentioned that Mexico is in peace and that this is one of the not only historical process in terms of the number of people who are being elected for, for local and, and federal government, but he also say that it's historical because it's the first time that democracy is happening in the country while we are seeing all this uh, type of violence all across the country. The vast majority of the candidates who were killed and the vast majority of the attacks are against candidates of opposition parties. Uh, politicians for opposition parties are the ones who have been targeted by this, by this violence in different parts of the country. But it is also true that those who have been attacked uh, are in, in locations where the organized crime has increased its influence over the last few years and also where uh, the human rights situation is worse than ever precisely because of the, the, the strong presence of the security forces of the military. So it's difficult to say where the violence is coming from because it's the same violence that is affecting the general population. But the reality is that it is reflective of the human rights crisis that Mexico has been facing for many years. And Vice President uh, Kamala Harris is scheduled to meet uh, today uh, with uh, uh, President uh, López Obrador. Can you talk about the, the significance of her coming immediately after these elections uh, in the trip to Mexico, uh, and also what you would hope uh, that a, a vice president would tell the, the president of Mexico at this point? We are hoping that uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is going to have an open and honest conversation with President López Obrador, raising concerns about the human rights situation that is affecting, of course, the possibility of people to seek asylum at the border. We also need to acknowledge that many Mexicans are seeking asylum on the U.S. side, precisely because of the human rights situation that the country is facing. Unfortunately, um, we've seen the results of the visit of Vice President Harris in Guatemala and this very contradicting message of telling people not to come and not to seek asylum when the reality is that it is a human rights, uh, there is the human rights of people to seek asylum that has been violated precisely because of the cruel and inhumane political uh, policies of, of the Trump administration that we are seeing continue to be implemented by the Biden administration, including the closing of the border to migrants and asylum seekers. Uh, uh, using uh, in a very unlawful way this title 